With their current Starship designs beginning to show their age, Starfleet Command would set its best and brightest the task of creating new technologies to keep Starfleet at the forefront of Starship design. And to test these new technologies, the Tudor class would be born. But what do we know about this experimental Starship class? Well, today we'll find out. Hello and welcome to the premiere episode of this new season of Truth or Myth Beta Canon, a Star Trek web series that dives into the history of any given topic, using Beta Canon sources and my own imagination to fill in the gaps. In today's episode, we're taking a look at the Tudor class as first seen in the FASA Starship manuals to better understand its place in Star Trek history. I just wanted to take a moment to thank you all for your continued support and love for the channel. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and a Happy New Year, and wish you all the best for 2024. But of course, because this is just a Beta Canon video, all information relayed should pretty much be taken with a grain of stardust and only considered a little bit of Star Trek fun. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. By 2265, the Duotronic Technological Revolution was over. The explosion of Starship designs had reached the pinnacle of that developed technology. But sadly, Starfleet and the Federation public in general didn't believe that that was enough. The 2260s had proven to be a hard time for the Federation and Starfleet Command. In response to the first Federation Klingon War, the Klingon Empire had begun their own technological development era leading to the development of the D-7 Battlecruiser, a formidable starship design, as well as eventually the Katinga-class battlecruiser. The once jewel in Starfleet's crown, the Constitution-class, was steadily losing its luster as the class experienced system failures, extreme damage, and even destruction events. The re-emergence of the Romulan Star Empire, with starships that could be rendered invisible not only to the naked eye, but virtually every sensing device that the Federation had was alarming to say the least. Starfleet Command realized its fleet needed new advancements to lead it into the 2270s or risk falling behind its enemies. Employing the Daystrom Institute as well as the Warp Technologies Development Group, Starfleet instructed those best and brightest that they needed and wanted stronger, faster starships that could tow the line and replace Starfleet's aging Starfleet. The Daystrom Institute would set its sights on computer core redevelopment. Duotronics in its current state had gone about as far as it could go, and so their only option was to take a look at that technology and redesign it from the ground up. And after 18 months of redevelopment, the Daystrom Institute would be successful in creating a new Duotronic computer chip capable of twice the processing power of its predecessor. Meanwhile, the Warp Technologies Development Group, Starfleet's own Warp Drive development team, had its own redevelopment phase. Also starting from the ground up, the Warp team would invent an entirely new engine system, resulting in what would affectionately come to be known as the Vertical Warp Core. Containing all new and redesigned components, in theory, the Vertical Warp Core would provide a tremendous increase in available power output, while at the same time reducing the amount of fuel required to attain those power levels. With both the new warp drive systems and the new computer core ready for testing in 2267, Starfleet Command would commission several classes in order to test this new technology, and the first class slated to include these technological innovations was the Tudor class. Sitting at a length of 258.3 meters, the Tudor class was designed to be operated by 220 officers and crew members. The Tudor class had barely been approved for construction by Starfleet Command when the decision would be made to alter the class to contain the new technologies for testing. Though containing the fairly familiar cylindrical warp nacelle seen throughout the Constitution class design era, the forward section of the nacelle would be modified to test out the newly designed warp coils as well as the Boussard collectors. The prototype vertical warp core, as well as the prototype enhanced duotronic computer core, would also be included within this design. As a result, the Tudor class would have a standard safe cruising speed of warp factor 6.5 
with an emergency maximum speed of warp factor 9 for 14 hour increments. A single nacelle design, originally intended to be a patrol vessel class to be deployed along the Romulan neutral zone, the Tudor class was to have at least 30 starships of this design constructed. However, switching its profile over to a rapid testing starship design would mean that only four starships of the class would ever see the light of day. Testing on the Tudor class's new systems would begin in mid-2267 and was wrought with problems from the start. The vertical warp core performed way over its theoretical specs, while the new computer core underperformed due to several faulty processors that had been repurposed from older computer cores. Of course, when testing such new and wildly different technologies, these types of problems are to be expected. And so, over the next two years, components would be redesigned or replaced on both systems, while its engineers obtained a better understanding of this new technology, eventually leading to the true prototype of all this new technology being born, the Miranda class. Before finally being installed in the Constitution class refit, USS Enterprise, in the early 2270s, where all this new technology truly proved itself. But by the end of 2268, the Tudor class was finishing up its testing profile, and Starfleet Command was then left with a problem. What to do with the class? Making significant alterations to the design internally, the Tudor class would become a personnel transport vessel class, able to deliver needed personnel to a target starship or facility much faster than the standard personnel transport vessels of the time. The Tudor class would also be used to transport emergency cargo during events which required the utmost in speed. The Tudor class would end up serving a dozen years in the fleet, before the decision would be made to decommission the class in favor of both the Miranda and Oberth class designs, with all four starships of the class stripped of its useful technology and being sent to one of Starfleet's decommissioned shipyards. Created to test several new technologies, the Tudor class would become an important stepping stone to the technological revolution of the 2270s, earning this class its respectable and needed place in Starfleet history. Thank you for watching today's episode of Truth or Myth Beta Canon. What do you think of the Tudor class and the historical narrative that I've created here? Do you want to see more videos like this one? Well, leave your comments in the section below and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, hitting that little bell icon so you won't miss a single video we release. Want to help the channel test new technologies to keep it a state-of-the-art YouTube Star Trek source? Then consider becoming a channel patron, a major help that allows this channel to purchase resources and 3D models to keep it going. The link to our Patreon account is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, live long, and prosper.